Welcome to the Friendship Baptist Church in the Colony. I'm Senior Pastor Gregory C. Trotter, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our live streaming program here at Friendship Baptist Church. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you into our worship service. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and that you will receive that blessing that God has in store for you. So sit back and enjoy the worship service. We welcome you to the Friendship Baptist Church in the Colony. Blessing to be in the house of the Lord. To those we welcome you today and to this worship experience and to those that may be live streaming, we welcome you also into this worship experience. The Bible says that we're to worship him in spirit and in truth. How many came out that you would worship the Lord today? in spirit and in truth. Amen, amen. Our deacons are ready to lead us in devotion, so we now turn it over into the hands of our deacons. Amen? Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's time for devotion, amen? It's time to devote your service, yourself to this service, amen? Amen. I'm Deacon Carr. Deacon Prim will be leading in devotion, and we got Deacon Strong is going to start us off with song. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise this morning. Let's give him some praise this morning. Let's praise God like he did something the morning this week. Let's praise God like he is God. And beyond him, there is no other. Thank you. Thank you. And God, thank you. Brother Davis, can you start near the cross? You know that's the only song that I know. I need everybody to join in with me on this because I can't sing, okay? Everybody sing. church I'm going to be reading scripture today and the scriptures that I will be reading is a familiar scripture it is 100 Psalms and it reads this way make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye land serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving 
and unto his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Amen. It'd be a blessing on the word to hear it. Most of all, the do of his holy word. Amen. Amen. It's time to pray, y'all. Amen. So if you're doing anything, let's see. So whatever we're doing, let's go together to God in prayer. Amen. The Bible tells us when two or three get together, in Jesus' name, he'll be in our presence. Do I have a witness? Everybody agree? All eyes closed, all heads bowed. Let us pray. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Ask you, Lord, forgive us for our sins, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for getting us here safely this after this morning, Lord, for the 11 o'clock service, the first day of February of 12, 2015, a day that wasn't promised. So we thank you for your new grace and your new mercy this morning, Father. Now we ask you, Lord, that you magnify yourself in this place today, Father. Let everybody feel your presence that's come on this property. We ask you to continue to bless those that are still on the way, Father. Let everything that we do be pleasing to you. Be decent and in order, Lord. Bless everybody on the sound of my voice in a mighty, mighty way. Let us have a joyful time in you. We come to praise and worship you this morning. We love you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Turn it over to the musicians.
without you. Lord, I'm nothing without you. I'm nothing without you. the Lord everybody. How many people glad to be here today? Now I'm going to say that again because you ought to be glad to be seen and not viewed. How many people glad to be here today? We just buried one of our members yesterday. You ought to be glad to be in the house of the Lord. One more day. Like the dew in the morning Gently rest upon my heart Like the dew in the morning Gently rest upon my heart Help me sing like the dew
Yes! 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 Amen. Good morning, friendship. Amen. We thank God for another privilege and opportunity to be in his house of worship one more time. We thank God for resting and ruling. Amen. In our life. Amen. That's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. That he will rest and he will rule. Amen. In our life. Amen. Today is first Sunday where we observe the ordinances of the church, communion and baptism. And today we have two that were baptized today. Amen. And this is special. This is, a, this is special because it's a father and a son. Amen. In an era of absent fathers, we thank God for father and son who was baptized today. Amen. And I know this young man will remember this for the rest of his life. Remembering the fact that I was baptized at the same time my dad was. Amen. We praise God. Amen. Today. Brother Denley Herbert II. Come on, young man. Amen. God bless you, young man. I extend to you the right hand of fellowship. And today we present you with a Bible and a baptismal certificate. God bless you, young man, and may he keep you. Amen. And then, Ethan, or did I get them backwards? That's okay. All right. We'll let y'all swap them out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. The Bible is the right one. The certificate you need to swap out. I'm glad y'all know your name. Amen. I extend to you the right hand of fellowship as well. Thank God for you and for your son today. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen.
Good morning. Giving all praise, honor, and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, to Pastor Trotter and other ministers on our roster, to our First Lady Sister Trotter, to our deacons and our deaconesses. My name is Vince Darius, and I'm here to welcome our guests. If you are not currently a member of Friendship, please stand and remain standing, please. <laughs> On behalf of Pastor Trotter and the Hospitality Committee, I welcome you to Friendship. We definitely realize you had a choice this morning as to what church you would worship with, and we truly feel honored and blessed that you chose Friendship. If there's anything we can do to make your stay with us more enjoyable and spirit-filled, please don't hesitate to ask. And if by chance you are church searching for a church home, there's no other place I can recommend other than Friendship. Friendship family, please stand and acknowledge our guests. How many of you know God really is good? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Not just on Sunday. Yeah. Amen. You know, we all just expect him to be good on Sunday. But I found him to be good on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday all over again. Amen. You know the reason why? Because he's God on Sunday. He's God on Monday. He's God on Tuesday. Amen. There's no day that he ever stopped being God. Amen. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If God ever stopped being God, you and I better hang it up and go somewhere and hide. But since I know that I know that I know that he'll never stop being God, then guess what? He's good on Sunday. Y'all go ahead and play a little bit more of that. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you the reason why I'm rejoicing this morning. Because since December the 7th, the Lord has called nine members of Friendship home. And then on this past Wednesday, he called my best friend home. But you know what the Lord said? I'm still good. I'm still good. And I'm still God. In the midst of people leaving here, I'm still good, and I'm still God. Amen. In the midst of your trials and tribulations, I'm still good, and I'm still God. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I serve a God who's good all the time. Amen.
right, I'm not going to bother you anymore. I'm not going to bother you anymore. Amen. Amen. But I serve a mighty good God. I serve an awesome God. I serve the true and the living God. Amen. understand you're being quiet. Amen. But I've got a story to tell of how good God has been to me. Amen. Where he's brought me from to where he's brought me to. And guess what? He's not through with me yet. Amen. All right. We welcome you guests to friendship. We're glad to have you. Please come back and share with us again. Those who are joining us by live streaming, we are welcoming you, amen, into this worship experience as well. Amen. We thank God for all of you being here today. Amen. Just a few observations, and then I'll take my seat. We want to let you know that we do have our new website up and running. Amen. So if you have not already visited it, please take an opportunity to look at our new website. Amen. Amen. I think you will be happy, amen, with the work that Brother Peter Burns put into our new website. And we thank God for Brother Peter Burns. Amen. <laughs> We also want to make you aware that um, on this past Wednesday, Wednesday of earlier this uh, last week, the Lord called one of our members home, Sister Tina Johnson. Amen. He called her home to be with him, and her service will be this coming Wednesday at 11 a.m. Amen. That's a picture of her standing there with her husband. Amen. There will be a wake on Tuesday from 6.30 to 8, and then the funeral will take place on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Amen. Also, on this past Wednesday, the Lord called my best friend home, Pastor L.W. Hutchinson. He's preached here twice. Amen. This past, last year, he preached our church anniversary, and he also preached uh, the installation service for us. But the Lord seemed fit to call him home, and his funeral service would be this coming Saturday in Abilene at 1.30. Amen. And because of that, because I've been asked to preach his funeral, so I'll be in Abilene this weekend. Amen. I'll be here Sunday. <laughs> Amen. But I'll be in Abilene this coming weekend to preach his homegoing celebration. Because of that, our leadership meeting that was scheduled for this Saturday we have moved it to the 21st of February. And we moved our church meeting also to the 25th of February. So the leadership meeting and the church meeting that was to take place next week, they both have been moved. Amen. Now, because of the funeral service for Sister Tina Johnson, there will be no 930 Bible study on next Wednesday but we will be having our seven o'clock Bible study. Amen? Amen? Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you here today. And we're here for no other reason but to worship God in spirit and in truth. <laughs> amen. I thank God that even in the midst of all that we are going through, amen, he still shows himself to be God. 
Amen. Our deacons and our ushers are coming at this time as we prepare to receive the tithes and the offering. Here at Friendship, we believe in tithe. We believe in offering. Amen. Tithe is what we owe God. The offering is the seed that we sow. And we're going to give back to God that which so rightfully belong to him. You can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. Amen. Amen. Our diggers are going to pray and then we'll receive our tithes and offering. Let us all bow. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for another day of life. Forgive us for our sins. Now we ask for a special blessing on the offerings, offering we're about to receive, Lord. Bless those that gave. Bless those that had it in their heart to give, but had it not. They be gone, used for the upgrowing of your, your kingdom on this side. We thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Well, the leadership of the ushers. God said amen. amen. This is the month that America calls Black History Month. We know why we're here. We're here. This is prayer time for those of you who know if you stand and make your way. I'm just reminded of the story of, they tell us that this is black history, but it's all about his story, not about our story. We know we had a civil rights leader, an activist, that we'll never forget. <laughs> Cities are filled with streets with his name on it. And he asked us and told us, he said, I have a dream. He said that one day, but I want to know, is this the day? Is this the day that we be the fathers that God has called us to be? Is this the day that we be the sisters that called us, that God calls us to be? Is this the day, men, that we treat our wives like God told us to treat them and stop abusing them and talk about? Is this the day that our lyrics will be more positive about who we are and where we're going? 
is this today. That you be the brothers and sisters in church that God has called you to be. Is this today you be the mother to step up to the plate and do what you have to do? Oh, I know things are rough. I know things are tough. But I want to know, is this today? Because Martin Luther King had a dream. Sometimes we find ourselves living a nightmare. So I just challenge you today to ask yourself the question, is this today? Let us pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come thanking Thee for this another day. Lord, recognizing that we didn't do anything to deserve it. In fact, there's nothing we could do to merit it. But Lord, because you showed favor, once again, Lord, you touched us to behold a new day. Lord, filled with new opportunities to say thank you. Filled with new opportunities to uplift and praise your name. Filled with new opportunities to tell another, die, another brother or sister about a man named Jesus, who's sweet I know. So Lord, help us to be the Christians you would have us to be. Help us to be the brothers, the sisters, the fathers, the mothers, the uncles, the nephews, the cousins, the friends. Lord, that we know that we're supposed to be. But Lord, we come asking thee to forgive us where we've fallen short. Forgive us for saying those things you told us not to say. Forgive us for going to those places you told us not to go. Forgive us, Lord, for touching those things you told us not to touch. And Lord, we ask you to continue to wipe us, clean us up, so we can be used for your service and your glory. Well, there's somebody here today that's bereaved. Someone lost a loved one. Lord, I don't know the pain, but you know. Lord, I don't know the grief, but you know. But Lord, I just thank you. You're the type of God that cares enough that sits high and looks low and leans his ear to a listening cry of a sin sick soul. So Lord, we just come just thanking you for having your way, Lord. Thanking you for bringing us this far thanking you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And Lord, we just come just to give your name the praise because you're worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy. Thank you, Lord, for the ups and the downs. Thank you for the ins and the outs. Thank you for the good, the bad, and the ugly. She told us that all things work together for the good of them that love thee, to them that are called according to your purpose. Thank you, Lord, for friendship. A body of believers that are trying to do the best they can to serve you, Lord. Lord, thank you for a pastor and a shepherd. Pours out his heart. Pours out his love. Shows us that he's concerned. Thank you, Lord, for his wife, First Lady. Thank you for her caring arms and her caring touch. But Lord, if there's a visitor among us, if there's anybody here who don't know you in the point of their sins, help us realize today is a good day to get it right. But tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Sufficient unto today is the evil thereof. All we have is today. So Lord, we ask you to, to help us, Lord, to be all that we can be. And Lord, prepare our hearts for the preach word today. Lord, open our hearts so that we may be receptive and responsive to, to the man of God. And Lord, wherever he's weak, make him strong. Wherever he's torn down, put him back together. And let your words come through him, Lord, so that we too may be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray a service prayer. We thank God and amen.
this is Black History Month even though it's the shortest month of the year nevertheless I thank God that there's a time when we are recognized amen because as a people we have contributed much to this nation amen and I thank God for the contributions that we have been able to make. We may not all be recognized for what we've done, but God knows, amen, what we've done. And in honor of black history, Mother, we're going to sing just a verse of lift every voice and sing. Philippians, that fourth chapter, and we'll read one verse, verse number four. Philippians four and four. And it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. 
May the Lord bless the reader, the hearers, and the doers of his word. You may be seated. Father in heaven, we thank you again for this privilege of being in your house of worship. We want to thank you for manifesting your presence in this place. Now as we've come to this sacred hour, the preaching of your word, we ask that you would have your way. I humble myself, therefore, under your mighty hand that you may be exalted as I preach. Have your way now is my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we give glory, honor, and praise to God Almighty, to Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our comforter, keeper, and guide, to our ministers and deacons, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. For just a few moments today, we're going to talk about push your reset button. Push your reset button. Sometimes the trials and pressures of life makes it impossible for us to be happy. But Paul did not tell his readers in the book of Philippians to be happy. But he talked about joy and rejoice. You see, there's a difference between happiness and joy. You see, happiness is temporary. Joy is everlasting. Happiness depends on circumstances. In other words, happiness is controlled by outward circumstances. Joy, on the other hand, is controlled by what's on the inside of you. You see, with joy, it does not matter about outward circumstances because the source of joy is from within. You see, Paul is living proof to these Philippian Christians that the source of joy is from within. You see, Paul writes this letter as he sits in a Roman prison bound by two gods. But yet the theme of this letter is joy. Amen. Some 16 times in these four chapters, Paul uses the word joy or rejoice. Amen. Now, if you can sit in prison not being guilty of the charge and you still have joy, then you have something deep down on the inside. Now, so that I'm not guilty of taking a scripture out of context and preaching it, let me give you an outline of this fourth chapter that will help us to understand all 23 verses. You see, what we must understand is Christ is the power of Christian living. So Paul, in this fourth chapter, gives us five things <clears throat> that we will find out about the power of Christ in Christian living. You see, the first thing he tells us about the power of Christ is that it unifies. In other words, it brings us together. That's in verses 1 through 3. The second thing he tells us is that the power of Christ fortifies. In other words, it strengthens us. That's verses 4 through 7. 
And then the power of Christ purifies. That means that he cleans us up. Amen. Changes our way of thinking. And let me tell you something. If he changes our way of thinking, then he'll change the way we talk. Amen. And then fourthly, the power of Christ satisfies. In other words, he helps us to appreciate right where we are. Amen. That's what Paul said. I've learned that in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. So that's verses 10 through 12. And then lastly, the power of Christ supplies us. Amen. That's in verses 13 through 23. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So now since I've told you about all 23 verses, now I can go back and deal with the one verse Amen, that we read. Amen, amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, we're talking about push your reset button. Amen. Now, just in case somebody don't know what a reset button is, it's a button on the outside of a device that is pushed to restart or reboot a device that is experiencing interruption from its source. Right. Amen. Now, 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 you say, how does this apply to this scripture? Well, the enemy uses trials and tribulations and our circumstances. Amen. To try and call an interruption between us and our source. Can I get a witness? You see, God is our source. But if we are not careful, we will allow our circumstances and we will allow our situations, amen, to cause an interruption between us and our source. You see, every now and then we have to push our reset button. And, and let me tell you what your reset button is. Joy is our reset button. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you the white reason why joy is our reset button. Because Nehemiah tells us that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Amen. The reason why I have strength when I'm going through trials and tribulation is because I'm not looking at what's going on on the outside. I'm connected with what I have down on the inside. You see, happiness is all about what's going on on the outside. You see, as long as everybody loves you, as long as everybody hugs you, as long as everybody is speaking to you, as long as everybody is loving on you like you want them to, then you're happy. Amen. Well, let me, let me do this. Let me tell you how you can know whether or not you have happiness or joy. If you leave home smiling and you come back frowning, maybe all you have is happiness. You see, on your job, can't nobody steal your joy. In your home, can't nobody steal your joy. But now, if all you have is happiness, amen, Satan can give it, but he can turn around and take it anytime he gets ready. You see, our biggest problem is we've gotten happiness confused 
with joy. But you'll never read in the Bible where God promised us that we could be happy. I know you're going to get quiet there. Amen, amen. Because you're thinking about all of those scriptures that said blessed. That means happy. That's a different kind of happy. Amen, because it's talking about what I'm talking about, joy. Amen, because when you are blessed, it does not matter what folks say. It does not matter what folks do. Amen. They cannot change your attitude. Let me tell you something about an attitude. An attitude determines your altitude. And an attitude of joy will take you higher and further than happiness will. Let me read you a little story. And I'm not going to be long today. Let me read you a little story. There was two little boys that were playing one day. And one asked the other, wouldn't you like to wear glasses all the time? The little boy thought a minute and answered, no, not if I had to have the kind grandma had. <laughs> he said, she sees how to fix, listen to what I'm saying, a lot of things. And she sees a lot of nice things to do on rainy days. She sees when people are tired and sick and what will make them feel better. She always sees what you meant to do, even if you hadn't gotten things just right. He went on to say, I asked her one day, how could she see that way all the time? And she said, it was the way she had learned to look at things as she grew older. The little boy said, so I guess it must be the glasses. <laughs> Did you get that? You see, it's all about how you see. It's all about the glasses that you put on. You see, if, if we have on the glasses, amen, of circumstances, amen, all we're going to have is happiness. Amen. And it's only temporary. Amen. Amen. But if you have on the glasses of joy, amen, it does not matter about your circumstances. It does not matter about your trials. It does not matter about your tribulations. They all look the same because of what's on the inside. Paul was a man who did not complain. But he was a man who knew how to pray. Let me tell you something about Paul. The reason why Paul could talk about joy in the midst of being in prison is because this was not his first time that he had been in prison. And Paul learned something about God. And that is that he learned that God will show up in prison just like he'll meet you outside of the prison. You see, in, in Acts chapter 16, it tells the story of Paul and Silas. Amen. When they were in jail. Amen. They had been beaten and they had been thrown in the inner part of the jail. Amen. In the dungeon part of the jail, the dirty, stinky part of the jail, all because they cast a demon out of a little girl. Amen. And the owner of that girl saw that he could no longer gain profit from her. So they had Paul and Silas thrown in jail. But watch what happened. Watch what happened while they were there in jail. Paul didn't sit there and complain about where he was. He didn't whine about where he was. He didn't tell God, I was doing your work. I was doing your business. And now I've ended up in jail. 
Amen. But see, every time we face something, amen, because of what we are doing for God, amen, we go and remind God that, Lord, this shouldn't be happening because I'm doing your work. But what we don't realize is doing his work does not guarantee that we will not have trials and tribulation. As a matter of fact, it guarantees that you will have trials and tribulations. But let me, let, me, let me show you what Paul and Silas did. The Bible says that at midnight, they began to do something. They began to sing. And they began to pray. And in the midst of singing and praying in their midnight, while they were locked up in jail, the Bible says something happened. There was an earthquake. Y'all not listening to me. There was an earthquake. Amen. And all of the shackles Amen. Of those in prison fell off. And not only did they fall off, but the gates swung open. And the jailer woke up and saw all of those gates wide open. He just knew that everybody had escaped. But you know what Paul did? Paul said, do yourself no harm. He said, we are all still here. The point I'm trying to make is that while you're in your trials and tribulations, if you would pray and sing rather than complain and whine, maybe, just maybe, some shackles will fall off of you. Maybe, just maybe, some doors will swing open for you. But you've got to stop whining and complaining. When we find ourselves locked up in our situation, J-O-Y, joy, will unlock some doors. J-O-Y joy yeah. will make some shackles fall off of you. That son or daughter that may be out there rather than reminding them that you raised them right. And you know we'll do that. We'll tell them, you know, I didn't raise you like that. Maybe if you just start singing and praying, what you put in them, remember, is still down in them. But if you will sing and pray rather than complain, maybe it'll rise up. And what's on them will yeah. fall off. Yeah. And they will be yeah. set free. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you another, yeah. another situation. In Acts chapter 12, yeah. Peter was locked up awaiting execution. Uh -huh. See, Herod had already killed James. And he saw that it pleased the people. So therefore he locked Peter up. And he was going to execute him the next day. But Peter was in prison, locked up. Just like Paul between two God. And when you can sleep, knowing you're facing death, you got something down on the inside. Because if you read that 12th chapter, it talks about how Peter was there asleep between 
those gods. Amen. And the angel had to come in and punch him and wake him up. That means he was in a good sleep. Amen. How many of you could sleep knowing that on tomorrow your life would be taken? But because Peter had joy down on the inside, Peter realized that if I live, I'll live for Christ. But if I die, it's gain because I'll go to be with. It's all about what's on the inside. If you're born again, you've got joy down on the inside. You say, Pastor, I don't think so. Yes, I remember what I said. If you are born again, if you are born again, you have joy on the inside. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. If you are saved, blood bought, then that means you have the Holy Spirit down on the inside of you. Guess what a byproduct of having the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is? He brings joy in us. You see, the problem is we got it in us, but we're being governed by what's going on on the outside of us. Amen, amen. Galatians 5 and 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love. It's in you. Amen. It's in you. The fruit of the Spirit is. It's in you. Stop being governed by what's going on on the outside and take hold of what God has put in you. And if you take hold of what God has put in you, you won't have to take so many Tylenol. Hello, somebody. I got a headache. But it's coming from what's without rather than from what's within. Because let me tell you something. When you grab a hold of what's in, the Holy Spirit does not bring a headache. But he brings peace. He does not bring a headache, but he brings joy. He does not bring a headache, but he brings a sound mind. He brings patience. He brings strength. That no matter what folk do, hey amen, I'm going to grab a hold of what's on the inside of me. Somebody need to push the reset button this morning. You're going through something. You're going through some trial. You're going through some tribulation. Let me tell you the solution. Push the reset button. If you're aware of it, let me tell you what has happened. You've allowed your trial to separate you from the source. That's what Paul, when he said rejoice in the Lord. Do you know the reason why he put Lord there? Because he said this is your source of rejoicing. It's God that gives you what you need in order to rejoice. So he said, rejoice in the Lord always. In everything you go through, in every situation you face, in every person you deal with, he said, rejoice. Rejoice always. And he said, oh yeah, by the way, and again, Rejoice. Somebody this, this, this morning, this afternoon, you need to push your reset button. And if you push your reset button, let me tell you what you'll do. You'll have glasses like grandma. Let me tell you what those glasses do. They see things from God's perspective rather than from your perspective. That's what grandma was trying to get that little boy to see. He, he recognized that something was going on because grandma was doing too many good things. 
And so he wanted to know what it is, Grandma, that have you doing all of this stuff. How do you recognize all of these things? And she said that to him. And he thought he was, she was talking about glasses. She said, the older I get, I see things differently. I want to tell somebody this morning, if you take hold of the joy that's on the inside of you, I promise you your situation will look different. Now, did I say it was going to change? I said it would look different. And when it looks different, guess what? Then you are a prime candidate for your situation to change. But if you don't ever see it different, you will always react to it the same way. But when you put on the glasses of joy, push your reset button, you'll begin to see. Is anybody going through something this morning? Let me tell you what you do. Push your reset button. Reconnect with your source, which is God Almighty. And if you reconnect with him, he might not move your situation. Now let me tell you something else about joy. Joy don't mean that you're not going to cry. Joy does not mean you're not going to feel sorry. Joy does not mean you won't get sick. But let me tell you what joy means. You'll see your situation totally different. Because the Bible tells us that in this world, we're going to go through some stuff. But it's what you have on the inside of you that will determine how you see your situation. But let me tell you something else too. How you see your situation will determine how you pray. Why do you think Paul and Silas start singing and praying at midnight? It was because of the way they saw their situation. And when they start praying, guess what? Things happen. When we are seeing it from the eyes of circumstances, we pray a circumstance prayer. Hello, somebody. And let me tell you what a circumstance prayer is. You heard me say it earlier. We remind God of what we've done. Every Sunday, Lord, I was on the deacon row. Every Sunday, I sit over there where the preacher sit. Every Sunday, I was on that third pew from the front. Lord, I got close to the fire. I didn't sit in the back. We can remind God of all of the things that we have done. But when you start looking at your circumstances and situations through the eyes of J-O-Y, and let me tell you the acronym J-O-Y, it stands for Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. That's how you spell joy. Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. Let me tell you something. If you do that, let me tell you what will happen. You'll find shackles falling off, and you'll find doors being opened. Somebody need to press your reset button. God bless you. As these officers are preparing these deacons, there may be someone here today under the sound of our voice that may not know and understand even now this reset button, but it's about relationships with God, about the joy, unspeakable joy that is on the inside and only through that of Christ can you fully understand and know this joy that was spoke about today. So if there's one today is candidate for baptism by letter, Christian experience, we invite you down today.
another today? We invite you today. If you believe that, put your hands together. In spite of all the things that's gone wrong in my heart, there is. Someone else needs to come. 
You need to move right now. You can't have my job. To move right now. Thank you for joining us by live streaming for our worship service today. We are now in the process of extending an invitation in our sanctuary, but I want to also extend an invitation to you, our viewers, if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, that you might get to know him today. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. So if you are a non-believer and you would like to confess Jesus Christ, if you want to become a Christian today, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. And it's just that simple. You are saved. Also, if you're interested in having us to pray for you, you can visit our website. There's a place there for you to submit a prayer request, or if you're interested in becoming a member of the Friendship Baptist Church in the colony, you can also visit our website, and there is a place there for you to make that request also. But most of all, thank you for joining us today via live streaming as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. May God bless you and keep you, and may you have a blessed week.
Amen. We thank God for what he has done here today.